So one of the coolest things about every new Pokemon game that comes out is that they always try so many different new things. You have new regions every time, new Pokemon every time, new characters every time, and a lot of new gameplay features to enjoy as well. And it really makes the games a lot of fun. However, when it comes to trying so many new things in every new generation and every new game, you also have moments where the Pokemon games have a really good opportunity to do something awesome that they don't always seize and don't always take advantage of. And in today's video, that is what we're going to be talking about. Missed opportunities in Pokemon games and specifically the biggest missed opportunities from every Pokemon generation. It's not just gonna be me talking about this topic though, because I have brought along Mr. True Green 7 to help me have this discussion. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, and I'm really excited to get talking about this. Me too, this is a good topic. I believe so too. So I mean, without that, with that being said, uh, we might as well just go ahead and get right into it. I've got a pretty good list and I'm really kind of interested to see your commentary on it and see okay. what you have to say. And if you, by all means, if you have any other uh, thoughts on each generation, feel free to chime in as well. So when it comes to Kanto and generation one, the thing that I felt that I constantly, it comes to mind a lot uh, has to do with the story of the game, and I can't necessarily fault it just because it was the first game, and so obviously they were still trying to figure out how the Pokemon games work, they were still evolving and becoming what we know today, but with that said, I think there was a great opportunity uh, with what is present in the original Gen 1 games to have the story uh, revolve a little more heavily around Mewtwo and have the plot sort of be driven by the creation of the Pokemon itself because we see in the games there's bits and pieces of it like you have the Pokemon lab on Cinnabar Island which is presumably where it was created you have Mr. Fuji who is hinted at as being part of the project and then obviously you have Mewtwo itself but it's never really a driving force behind the story and I think if that were to be the case, where you had Team Rocket more heavily connected to Mewtwo and the story was all about them trying to create this super, super powerful Pokemon, I think it could have been, it could have made for an awesome experience, I think. So you're basically saying, turning in the, the theory that like Giovanni, was everything that he was doing was trying to stop Mewtwo after he uh, went rogue, like trying to get the Master Ball in order to catch Mewtwo or trying to go to like going to the Pokemon Tower to catch a ghost type in order to to, to battle with Mewtwo or something like that. Um, I think, well, first, I think Kanto's story is kind of better than Johto's in terms of, I guess, how much there is <laughs> of it. But um, yeah, definitely like giving way more context to whatever what's going on is is not a bad idea. I think like for example, Oras did a good job of adding a lot more context to the original story that was there. You know, adding Mega Evolution and Infinity Energy and a lot of other things, making vague things you know more concrete because people like the air of mystery that Kanto has and just like all the questions and all the theories that we still talk about today are because of how little. Uh, the story gives us in terms of details and I don't know maybe it'll take away from the charm of Kanto but it, it definitely wouldn't be a bad idea yeah and it I, I totally do agree that it's somewhat of a double-edged sword because uh, me personally that is one of my favorite parts about uh, the whole Kanto like story quote unquote is the fact that there are those little bits and pieces that are just sort of scattered around um, and I also really like that it's the one of the it's basically the only along with Johto uh, region and game that doesn't revolve around the legendary Pokemon I think that's sort of in today's day and age where that's such a regular thing I think that's kind of refreshing so I mean there for sure are I guess positives and negatives to it but I see a lot like with how important Mewtwo was uh, during that time frame and just the allure that it had I think uh, whether it would have been whether it could have been in like a enhanced version type game or something like that I think a story that sort of built up to that would have been really cool like that's kind of sort of not really been explored as much yeah. but moving on to gen 2 because uh, we've got eight generations to cover here obviously uh, the biggest thing I think, it's a, a little bit of a personal vendetta, I guess, uh, that you might not agree with as much, 
but I, I've talked about occasionally in my videos how, as a kid, I was always uh, sort of upset that Suicune got the benefit of the doubt being the mascot for Pokemon Crystal and the other two were kind of left in the dust. And so I thought that uh, it's sort of a two-pronged uh, point here, and that is Crystal focusing on the beasts as a whole and all and giving them all equal kind of standing and footing would have been amazing because the added bits of lore and story we got with Suicune were really cool. Uh, just imagine what that could have been for all of them because I did I always have thought it, it was a little odd that with those being such a tight-knit group that one of them got the kind of extra favoritism while the others didn't. So I think giving a little bit of extra detail to all three of them as a group would have been cool. And then also, there were a lot of allusions in Crystal to the unknown, and the unknown having something to do with Suicune, because they're featured heavily in the like main title screen and stuff like that for Crystal, and that never really goes anywhere in the games. You don't really ever see any connection to like the Ruins of Al for the unknown itself, so I think having something there even if we didn't get like a a trio game where it was all about the beasts as a whole I think having a little more connection to the unknown and maybe giving us some inkling as to what that whole situation was about I think that also could have been expanded on a little there's, more <laughs> there's no negative aspect to that I think it would be only positive if they did that mm -hmm. um my personal, uh, I guess, missed opportunities for Johto are, I mean, they're not personal, I think a lot of people in, uh, agree with, like, just actual, you know, Johto Pokemon on most, you know, of the gym leader and Elite Four team rosters. Again, that wouldn't, I, mean, I can't think of a reason to oppose such a thing. And also, like, um, I guess more Johto Pokemon in Johto, like, you know, having, you know, the Pokemon that you can only find in Kanto that are Johto Pokemon, uh, Gen 2 Pokemon, you know, maybe somewhere in the late game. Um, although, again, the, pro the problem is that a lot of them don't evolve, let's say Sneasel in Generation 2 doesn't evolve, and I mean, I'm not going to say that a missed opportunity was to give them an evolution, because it was very, I actually personally enjoyed have, seeing, I like uh, cross-generational evolutions, yeah. but um, yes, I guess missed opportunity is just to flesh out, uh, or just make some Pokemon more powerful and available. And then also just Celebi too, just having all, all the, the event with Celebi would have been a good thing for Crystal, I guess for, um, you know, the U.S. Right, yeah, having it basically like it was in the Virtual Console back in the day. Yeah. Because uh, I remember I was obsessed with getting Celebi back in the day. I remember I heard this rumor that was like, you gotta wake up at 6 a.m. and go to the Elix Force Shrine after you've caught all the Pokemon. And I I did that to a T. Like, I was so dedicated. And only to find out that it was, like, not true at all. So having it, like, actually there in some way would have been super cool. And I grew up with Gen 3, so my I did the same thing with like Jirachi and Deoxys. <laughs> yeah, oh man. Uh, and to your point about uh, the Johto Pokemon and Gym Leader teams and stuff like that, I, I do hear a lot of people talking about how uh, the a lot of the Gym Leaders and Elite Four, they have a lot of Kanto Pokemon as opposed to Johto Pokemon, um, which I think for sure another missed opportunity because it's not necessarily that there's a ton, there's like a lack of Johto Pokemon, there's a hundred, that's a pretty solid number. Um, it's just for whatever reason, they didn't really utilize them. Like one that always comes to mind for me is uh, Morty not having Mistrevis on his team. Like that's a, that's a big red flag. And I mean, there's definitely others as well. Uh, what does Falter have? He uses, that's another big one. He uses uh, Pidgeotto and Pidgey when he could have used Hoot Hoot. <laughs> so, it's just kind of another head scratcher type of thing where it's hard to really understand what they were thinking. But moving on to Gen 3, since you said you're a Gen 3 guy, I would say that but this is another thing I, necess I don't necessarily blame the games for not having. It just would have been really, really cool if they did, or even like in the remakes if they would have. Uh, done this sort of thing and that is taking advantage of the whole weather theme of the game with the just with the weather being such a like it, it's a lot more prominent in the game and obviously you have 
Kyogre and Groudon that heavily tie into that as well. And I think just having more creative features based around the weather would have been awesome. Like we see, uh, we see Cast Form that's a weather-based Pokemon, but Cast Form is just like such an anomaly. It's kind of like that's its whole thing and that's it. And we don't really get to see like what it does, which is like its weather-based forms. We don't really get to see a whole lot of, uh, we don't really get to see that outside of cast form itself. So I think I have they're a feeling that Game Freak at the time thought that since abilities were just introduced and people can utilize abilities and just maybe types with weathers and stuff with, you know, weather, overworld weather and stuff like that. And just, I think it, there may have been enough, um, just enough <laughs> with the weather at the time. Nowadays, when we're just used to it, maybe it's not as much, but I, I mean, I agree again, more is more. So. Yeah, yeah, and this is kind of a like a, a hindsight is twenty twenty type of thing because yeah, yeah. Uh, like nowadays where we have uh, like regional variants and mega evolutions and all these like crazy things and so it kind of just brings to mind an idea of like wow like what if they did that with like weather as a central theme where you had like certain Pokemon that got like. A, like kind of like cast form that got like a rainy form or a sunny form or something like that or uh kind of how we are seeing uh loxton he has his uh, whole cascade region cascade, series that yeah. he's doing and he's sort of like given weather conditions to more types and that's yeah. another i think great idea too so i think a lot of even in future games like it definitely couldn't definitely is not just like a hoen thing uh, weather is a thing I think they could expand on. For sure. I think a uh, missed opportunity that I have that is related is uh, just day and night. <laughs> I mean, there wasn't even at all day and night in uh, Ruby and Sapphire. And I think that would have enhanced the aesthetic of Ruby and Sapphire even more, considering I think day and night in Johto in, in, the, uh, in Gen 2 was a big... Uh, well, it was a big deal in terms of making uh, Gen 2 look way different than Generation 1 and having it it's having its own identity. So I think Gen mm. 3 would have looked even better with color, with, you know, I mean, even more color and uh, just, um, except, especially its palette. Like, I think Gen 2 had a, re uh, Gen 3 had really good palette, so, color palette, so, I don't know, right. it would have been really nice at night, and I wish we had that. Yeah, yeah, it could have fit in good, too, especially with, like, I mean, you they could have almost done a sun and moon type thing, I feel like, where maybe Ruby, because it's all about land and stuff, it could have been more day-focused, where... Maybe Sapphire was more night focused or something like Maybe. that. So yeah. I think that another thing I have, another thing I have in Generation Three is um, evolutions. We could have had some evolutions to some Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see it. I, I yeah, I agree with that. Um, moving on to Gen Four though, um, the big one I have, which th this is definitely one that stands out in my mind, and it could have been an actual thing at one point that maybe just didn't make the final games. Um, and that has to do with Shaman and its whole event not actually being involved in Flow Aroma Town because, I mean, Flow Aroma Town is like a town full of flowers and Shaman, like it lives in the flower paradise. It's pretty easy to see how that's a thing that would make perfect sense. But the thing that really drives me crazy about this, as far as wondering if this was supposed to be a thing, is the fact that right off of uh, Floroma Town, in between it and Eterna Forest, is the Fuego Ironworks, which is a big industrial building that just is basically a factory that produces a bunch of pollution. And Shaman's whole thing is that it purifies polluted areas. And so this whole just area seems like it was custom made for a Shaman event that never happened. And I, I don't know if it was planned or not, but either way, I think it was a huge, like, they dropped the ball type of thing to not do that because it was just so perfect. And then with the actual thing we ended up getting in the Flower Paradise, I mean, it's cool and all. Like, it did get an event where you got some gameplay, but it's just such a weird part of the region where it's just this giant, like, straight line of land that is just kind of its own thing in the Sinnoh region that almost seems like it doesn't even really need to be there. So I feel like Shaman could have got more naturally integrated with this whole uh, area surrounding Flo Aroma Town. 
Definitely, and it makes sense. I, I think the a point with the Fuego Ironwork makes <laughs> a whole lot of sense and would have expanded on the lore. Um, I think, I mean, the same thing. I think Arceus' event <laughs> was the, the ultimate missed opportunity. So that should have been in the game. <laughs> Yeah, and that's another one that's just like, what were they thinking? Because they actually did comment on that one, and they said, oh, we thought it would be too confusing for people to figure out, so we scrapped it. And, like, I'm, for me, I'm just sitting here like, uh, no, it wouldn't have been, because it was just like another event item. The Azure Flute was just like any other event item that they distributed, so... Like, I would really like to know what their actual reasoning was for that. And I'm crossing my fingers. Mm. I mean, if all pans out and we get the games that, we're think that we think we're going to get soon, that that Azure Flute event gets revived. So I definitely think that in an eventual Sinnoh remake that there is going to be a mythical event in the game, just like the Delta episode. Right. Yeah. And that, yeah, that would... I'm, ho I'm hopeful for it too, because that would really be icing on the cake. Uh, with that said though, we are going to shift gears, and this is going to be it for the first part of this discussion. The second part is going to be over on the UCAS Studios gaming channel, so if you want to keep hearing what we have to say about all of these generations and hear what we think uh, about the rest of the games, be sure to go f uh, to that video with the link in the description. And obviously, be sure to check out Ron as well. His channel will be linked in the description i'm sure you guys already know him already but if you don't you should check him out because he makes great videos uh so with that being said we will see you guys over on the other channel and until then as always thank you guys for watching i love you very much and i will see you guys later